Right guys, Jack here, JBF Music and Guitar Lessons. What I've got for you today is an unboxing and demo of a Glary guitar. I'll put the relevant information for this and a link down in the description. The kind people over at Glary have sent me this thing. I've never really done unboxing things before, but I know some of you guys are into it. So I'm going to open it out, do first impressions, give it a demo and see what I think of it. Got my trusty Stanley at the ready, so let's open it. Okay, so there's just a huge chunk of polystyrene in here, which is good, that's ample protection. There's a bit of a putrid smell coming out of it, but that sometimes happens if things have been packaged. So let's get this out. This seems like a really weird way to open it. Normally I'd open a guitar at the top, but this has been sealed on the side, so I figured that would be the easiest way to get out. Whether that's the case or not, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, admitting defeat, I'm going to open it on the side on this one. You can tell I haven't done this before, can't you? <laughs> polystyrene flakes going everywhere. So little polystyrene balls are over my floor. Let's see if it's worth it. Okay, first impressions, this does look rather nice. I'd, um, ideally wanted a blue one, but they didn't have any in stock, so I went for a red. Uh, let's get out of the sheath and have a closer look. So underneath it here we've got a little bag of something, I don't know if this is just a guitar bag or if it's some leads. Alright, cool. So maybe a little gig bag, strap, some Allen keys and probably a pretty low quality lead. But it'll do for the purposes of trying it out. It's actually a decent amount of weight to this. This should be the thin line Telecaster, so I was expecting it to be a bit lighter because it's you know kind of hollow inside. But let's get out. That's pretty nice. So the obligatory tuning test. Beautiful. Right, so let's have a bit of a closer look at the finish here before we do anything else. So first impressions, I can't really see anything wrong with it. Uh, there's a tiny little mark around here. Where was it? Tiny bit of red here, so let's just see if that rubs off. No, so maybe a little bit of paint's got onto the scratch plate there. Okay, I could probably take that off with a bit of white spirit or something. The, the, the finish itself looks looks really nice. I'd say the photos on their site didn't really quite do it justice. The uh, kind of half transparent red with the lovely green of the wood underneath it. So the neck itself feels incredibly unfinished to the extent it might even need a little bit of wax or something on it. I, I don't particularly like a glossy neck, so I'm quite interested to try this out. But it does feel like it maybe benefit from a, a little layer of protection because it, it just feels like wood just now. Fingerboard here. Can't see anything particularly bad looking here. The fret edges do feel a little bit sharp running my hands up and down here. Uh, not the end of the world for me, provided I don't cut my hands up on it. That looks to be decent enough. The strings seem to be fitting in well without too much uh, room for movement. You can see the nice wood inside of the F hole there as well. You can see we've got a humbucker in the neck, a single coil on the bridge. It's also got individual saddles, which is great. Sometimes a Telecaster just has three, and that makes setting the intonation much more difficult. So I'm just about to tune this up and give it its, its first whirl. Uh, on closer inspection, there's a tiny sort of stain on the fretboard. Just around here. Doesn't seem to rub away, you might be able to get rid of it with some oil. I don't know if this will come up on the camera, but the finish in the F hole is a little bit half-hearted. It's not being sanded down or glossed in the same way. I, I'm not too bothered about cosmetics, I'm more about kind of playability and sound, so let's see how it goes. I should also add that because of the price point of being like a 80 or 90 quid guitar, I really am not expecting miracles here. As a side note, I always tune up the lower strings first, just in case the higher ones break if they've been down tuned so there's not too much tension on them. I'm also going to over tighten this string because I suspect it'll go down as then it gets slightly bowed with the other strings being tuned up to pitch. So preliminary tune up done. So it's got quite a nice acoustic sound from it. I have also noticed where the neck joins the body, there's a tiny bit of the neck has kind of squidged out because it's maybe too tight a fit. The action is fairly high because it hasn't been set up. That's kind of what you'd expect from a guitar. So here's a look at the low E strings action as well. Playing the chords there, it does feel a bit weird around the, the second and first fret. So I think there might be slight tuning issues. So if you push down too hard, 
you're going to knock it out of tune. I know it's that because there's a few cheaper guitars I've had in the past that have the same issue, so I think that's maybe to do with the nut perhaps being a tiny bit too high. So I probably need to give the strings a bit of a stretch in, but I just want to hear how it sounds, so I'm going to plug it in. The fretboard is incredibly dry and would benefit from a bit of lemon oil on it. Okay, so I've got a patch that I kind of use with my telly for a sort of clean sound as well. Once where it's a bit kind of on the edge of breakup, so if you hit hard get a kind of a bit of spank. So the pickups are actually so far better than I was expecting. Let's have a quick go on the neck. Might angle that one for a bit clarity on the top. I'll take it a bit further away from the bottom strings. Let's try them both together. Well, that's quite nice. This guy's cool. Honk. So if you're thinking about picking one up, if you go through that link, that'd be fantastic. So show them that it's worthwhile working with me and I can maybe do some sort of giveaways or something like that in the future. First impressions, it looks pretty cool. I'm pleased with how it sounds. The, it really needs a setup. So uh, I kind of want to do a little bit of that just now to see how much that improves the playability because the action's a wee bit high for me just now to kind of... I really feel comfortable playing it. Uh, just, just eyeballing this, the truss rod is actually fairly straight. There's a tiny bit of relief in it, which is probably how I tend to set things up. Action, intonation, I see where we're at. So I've lowered the action, I'm going to tune it up, see if there's any dead spots. D just so you know, my approach to setting up guitars is basically I get the action as low as I can before notes start getting choked out or before bending becomes too difficult. Uh, for the most part, my, my Telecaster I've got set up was really quite low action because I prefer to do kind of rhythm stuff. So the strings are really tense, it's difficult for lead. But my Stratocaster I tend to set a little bit higher so I can play a little bit slide on it. So I don't necessarily have like a universal action that I use for every guitar, but as a starting point, get it to a point where it's as low as it can be, but still sounds good, and then I'll just adjust from there. And I'm just going to give the strings a stretch in while I'm at it as well. On that note, a top tip is to, instead of just stretching it in the middle, hold down the first fret and pull it here, move your hand up, so I'm holding in the fourth fret, seventh fret here, say eleventh there. 17th here, and that helps stretch out the string, at least in, in my in my head it helps stretch it out a little bit more. Another thing I quite like to do is um, over tighten the strings just a little bit, so maybe somewhere between an E and an F, and then stretch it in. And that seems to help the strings settle in a little bit more when you've put a new set on. So I've worked my way onto the G string, just as a side note, the tuners feel pretty stable and reliable thus far. Okay, so I've, I've lowered it far too much. I just can dead notes everywhere. Oh, hang on. So the E and B aren't too bad. But if I go to bend notes on the E, it's too much. I think the B is about as good as I'm going to get it. So I'm going to kind of use that as a reference point and try and balance them out from there. Okay, so I'm almost there. I'm still having some problems with the, the D string. Let's check, is there much of a radius? There's a bit of a radius on the fretboard, so it makes sense I need to raise the D and the G a little bit higher than I normally otherwise would. Okay, so I think I've resolved the issue. Uh, there seems to be a wee bit of a problem up at this. I think it's the 21st fret. Okay, 
more or less resolved it, but that seemed to be where the buzz was happening, so I could spend more time working on that. But I'll give you a quick look at the action. So you can see it's way lower than it was before. Maybe not where my, my shredding soul wants it to be, but it's good to have a bit of variation. If there's a bit more, um, a bit less tension on this guitar, it means the bigger bends and stuff like that are easier. So it would have a good use uh, if I wanted to do a solo with big bends. It's got a really nice spank to it uh, on the, the, the bridge pickup there. You know what, since it came with it, I'm going to give the, the strap and the, the plaque trim a go as well. So just a kind of standard um, finish pick. It's got a nice matte finish to it for grip. It's not the type of one I'd normally use, so I'm playing my uh, Suffer a little bit here. It's a really basic strap, what you'd kind of expect at this price point. Yeah, strap functions as a strap, pick functions as a pick. So the bag here, just to get out quickly, is one of these kind of very thin ones. Again, it's the sort of thing you'd expect. It'll carry a guitar, it'll keep water off it, but it's very thin, so those would offer like virtually no uh, protection. Alright, a bit more drive on it now. Still not a huge amount, I can roll the volume down. And clean it up quite nicely, but just... the bridge, let's go for the next. Right, I've added more gain now. There's a lot more high end in this than I would normally have dialed in. I suspect this is a guitar I would use with lower gain settings, but that was the bridge pickup. Let's try the neck. Very, very kind of muddy, very bassy. Not too, too much distinction on these lower notes, and if I try the middle setting, compromise actually. Whether you'd want that kind of honky sound in for uh, distorted chords or not is a different matter. Right, let's have a look at some leads. And both them together again. Yeah, so this sound makes me want to just do kind of bubble picking. You know, lots of scratches, very little. And up the gain further. So if you wanted a kind of uh, Guns N' Roses, what that kind of... Like a kind of Izzy, Izzy Stradlin almost kind of lead uh, rhythm sound. That's not... For, for the price, it's not a, a thousand miles away. Can you 
here. I'm struggling with the, the action a little bit. Although it's nice not having that much that much tension the, uh, compared to what I normally have on this. Now let's go for the neck. What's interesting about this guitar is it's making me hybrid pick a lot more. I, I don't know why that is. Different guitars just make you do different things, I suppose. Gather, let's see what I do here. Not anything particularly special. <laughs> I don't know how much of this I will include in the video, but I'm going to try some different patch settings as well, see what other tones we can get out of it. Okay, so this is the preset I use on my Ibanez Prestige, so there's going to be probably a lot more treble on the high end, a lot of gain on this one. Yeah, probably too much. But it's, it's kind of... It's got kind of a cool sound, there's a lot, a lot of high end. Hey, pick up. Got a, a kind of nice. A nice kind of creaminess to it, but still a lot of. A high end fizz. Which is sometimes sometimes you want that. I also have to say that the higher action doesn't seem to be really getting in the way too much for um, kind of legato playing and stuff like that. I, I'm gonna put on an obscene amount of fuzz and just a little bite on it uh, and see what happens. Right, so this is a tone that I'd be more likely to actually use. Not quite as fizzy as the last ones, it's still quite a lot of high-end punch. Another trick with tellies is you can roll down the tone a little bit to get rid of a little bit of the high-end. If you find it to be a bit too much. Let's try the same thing on the neck. Yeah, that's quite nice. So I think the reason I've been hyper picking more is because the action's higher and um, I'm not as used to trying to alternate pick on this kind of uh, this kind of setup. So using the, the hybrid picking seems to be a a neat little workaround for me. Oh, there, you can hear us missing a ton of notes. Cool. Oh. So you got that kind of like a raggedy sound, like uh, maybe something like Rock in the Free World. It's probably going to deliver that, or kind of maybe a grungy, you know. It's never going to deliver a metal. 
doesn't sound particularly convincingly. So something that would probably do quite well here is I've dialed in a fairly smooth lead tone. So this is just to the bridge pick up. technique isn't good enough to sweep on at action this high convincingly but um, in terms of being able to pick quite quickly So first impressions and initial playthrough for a, particularly a semi hollow body at this pri price point is very good. Having said that, I can't wholeheartedly say I'd recommend this to a beginner uh, because it'd take a while to set up and get easy to play. I mean, you could take it into a shop, but then you're probably going to spend an extra, what, 20, 30 quid on a setup. If, however, you're kind of bored with your own guitars looking for a bit more inspiration, or even better still, fancy something that's a little bit of a project, so maybe you've got an interest in doing up guitars or modifying them, never really taking the plunge, you've got a spare sort of like 80 quid to spend, this is probably a good shout. There is quite a difference in balance between these pickups, particularly playing with higher gain sounds, which you can sort out by raising and lowering them. I'll probably have a bit of a tinker about with that to find a, a, a kind of setting I like more. The fretboard really does need some hydration. You can hear the kind of... The, the strings scraping against it there, so I'll put some oil on that and I'm sure it'll bring it a, a bit of an extra lease of life. So the conclusion here is probably much like what you'd expect. For the price point, it's really good. You can't particularly complain too much. There are things you could change about it that if you're a, a bit of a guitar enthusiastic or an amateur who always seems to mess it up like myself, you could probably spend, I don't know, a day or two and just 
tweak everything and get it playing a bit better. And that's exactly what I'm going to do when I've got a bit more spare time. I'm going to tinker about with this more and kind of let the guitar tell me what type of guitar it wants to be. If you're curious, give the link in the description a click. And just again, a cheers to Glary for sending this. And what I particularly liked about it is there wasn't any stipulation. It wasn't like you need to say these things verbatim. There wasn't like a script to read from. It wasn't like you can't say anything bad about the product. It was just like, here's a guitar, do what you want with it. So I thought, okay, which I think is probably the way to do these because then you guys know that it's a much more honest kind of review for lack of a better term that you're getting here. I don't tend to do an awful lot of gear videos but if you're interested in that I'll put some here. You can click subscribe to keep up to date with the channel. You can support it on Patreon but cheers guys. I hope you're having a good one and let me know if you pick up one of these.